Hey there, YouTubers. All right, so can do a bunch of benchmarks with the i5-11400. Add this to uh, all those that are already out there. This uh, this one, we've got the stock CPU cooler that was included, okay? So eventually, we will replace this uh, as there are some, you know, limitations with what you can do with the stock cooler, right? Now, in the video, we'll uh, do a benchmark with Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility. I believe it will only be defaults because I don't think the CPU can CPU cooler can handle me adjusting power limits. Uh, we will also do uh, Cinebench R20. Uh, what else do we have, folks? We've got uh, Discmark 64. We'll hit that. We'll run User Benchmark and the Bench in uh, Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility. Now, all kinds of stuff here. So I ran this once. I'm going to run it again just so you guys can see the temperatures this is going to hit. But before that, let's take a look. We, uh, we've got the i5-11400. 16 gigs of RAM. RTX 2060. Now the RAM is uh, Patriot 4133 megahertz. And guess what? It can only run at what speed? 3200 megahertz, right? So... Uh, with the stock cooler, we may experience thermal throttling. We'll see. So let's go ahead and uh, actually before we do that, uh, here's these settings, just in case you care. Obviously, with a lock process, you can't change these, but these are what the multipliers are. So the max core frequency is going to be somewhere between here and there, All right? You could probably uh, kind of average that out now. Power limits, there's PL1, PL2, okay. I can actually adjust these. I'm not going to, though. I discard. Um, and then turbo boost, turn that on and off here. Turbo boost short power max enable, that is. So let's go ahead and benchmark this. And this will take a moment. Now, this uh, i5-11400, uh, it is a pretty impressive uh, CPU, I will say, before we get into this. And it will be even more impressive once I replace the CPU cooler. And adjust the power limits. But uh, this thing's cranking through. I would expect this is, is better than an i7-9700. Um, the i5-10400 was pretty close, but this one seems a little bit better. So, wow, it gets pretty warm during this, right? 82 degrees Celsius. Um, there's the score, pretty much the same one that we just saw. And, you know, because we're using the stock cooler, it's going to take a while to cool off. So hopefully it will cool off. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of Noctua thermal paste. Uh, but we did use the Intel stock paste that came on the cooler. And, uh, you know, maybe we should have upgraded it. I don't know. So any day now, this will get down to uh, reasonable temperature. So I think next we will go ahead and do Cinebench R20. One thing I didn't note, we do have an EVO 980 Pro installed. So that's a Gen 4. And uh, by the end of this, you'll get to see whether it runs at Gen 4 or Gen 3 speed. All right, let's go ahead and hit this. And I will bring this up, uh, make it smaller. Y'all can see that, oh, the temperatures it's running at again. And then we'll check to see if it uh, thermal throttles. So far it has not. little boxes being made in the background
And if you notice here, you can see the temperature has risen. And it is pretty much where it was at this point. Now we do have a rainstorm going on in the background as well as uh, AC is running pretty hard in my room. Uh, this is one of the few times it has actually rained here in Africa while well, I've been here. The whole five months and so many days. We still get a, lot, a little more time to go, folks, before we can get out of here. All right. So there you go. 3851. How does that compare to the other stuff we have? Okay. So, if you go back in history, you can tell it's better than a 7th Gen i7. It's better than the i5 10 600KF. Considerably better, right? Um, who has one of these? And, you know, some people still have those. But then you go here, 3851. Look at that, 11600K. Now, this is uh, not as close as it looks, right? This is in a B560, I believe. This this should be mine. Uh, hence why they're close. Running this in a B560. This was a Z590 motherboard. Would not have been as close. Uh, there's the 10700K. Couldn't tell you which motherboard that one was done. Or if that is even mine. I, I do have all these. This is the amazing thing. Like I have this one. I have that. I have that. Yeah, so we have... All these guys and then there's the ones that exist but uh 3851 all right no power limits adjusted like i said um why not run cinebench or this mark for y'all go ahead and run that you can see the drive is got quite a bit of stuff on it 91 percent full So I am using the uh, Lenovo video capture card to record this via a secondary computer. Um, that way we don't taint the results in the video. So, so far, um, you know, while we have time, this H510M is significantly better than the H410M. But, uh, you know, if you were out shopping, I would say just go get a B560 or B560M. 
There's a uh, price wise, uh, not much difference. Now, if you're shopping for mini ITX and you find a heck of a deal on one of those with Wi Fi, less than 99 bucks, whatever, you know, maybe that's a maybe that would be a good price point, but uh, yeah, otherwise, it just doesn't uh, doesn't seem like a good buy. So this thing's getting closer to being done. And it's almost there. All right, there you go, folks. That is uh, Crystal Bench. Now let's go ahead and run User Bench in case you care what the results are. Uh, this will not give you scores for my M.2, most likely, which is a shame, but... I do have a uh, SATA drive hooked up through USB, so we'll, we'll see if it scores out completely. It's one of the things, knowing about this software, if it one of the components doesn't score out. It doesn't at least attempt to give you an overall score. Mm -hmm. Any day now.
and we're almost there 16 minutes into the video okay so it did score out surprisingly um, there's your scores across the top makes this a pretty solid gaming computer there's the processor now right in the middle be curious how these guys got theirs higher um, potentially that is from messing with oops sorry um, could be from PL1 PL2 being set higher we won't try it like I said with the stock cooler because they're getting pretty warm there's uh, the scores. This, uh, you know, I believe puts it in i7-9700 territory, except for single core. So a lot of these scores are actually higher. This guy probably is uh, comparative. So this did not score out. Um, the score would be higher. My SATA drive that's hooked into the USB port did score out. That's why this does get a score. So, uh, otherwise, you know, this this would be a little higher. There's the Patriot RAM. 3200 megahertz. That's the base speed. So, there you go, folks. That's going to do it for uh, the benchmark for the i5. 10 400s. These are the benchmarks that I do on the channel. Um, thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.